Yes, guys. Yes, people. Welcome back to Chelsea Fan TV. Welcome back to another episode of Five Things We Learnt. You guys already know the show. You guys already know the topics. We are going through all the major talking points of the last Chelsea game. And I'm really starting to enjoy this show because, yo, we're on a run. We're on a run. God knows how long this run's going to last. Because I have said, like, positivity aside and everything, I do expect us to drop off at some point in the season because... If we don't, we're talking about a title race. And I need to see that. I need a lot more games to even start talking crazy like that. But the next month will tell us a lot. It will tell us a lot. For now, we're just doing our thing. We're, we're surprising people. We're kind of agitating a few people. Because no one really expected us to have this good of a start to the season. I, I know it's not been perfect. Obviously lost to City, but I mean, Man City first game. Don't get me started on that one. We haven't had um, the best performances in games like Bournemouth, for example, second half against Crystal Palace. But it's been a much smoother start to the season than I anticipated. I, I didn't expect it to be like this. And I think a lot of people didn't as well. And it's a good, it's a good thing to enjoy. It's really a good thing to enjoy. For the first time in ages, right, we went 1-0 down and I didn't care. I wasn't stressed. I wasn't worried. I wasn't thinking, oh, here we go. We're going to be under the cosh for 90 minutes. I just thought, bad goal. A little bit annoyed at the goal, but we're coming back. We're going to come back because we're the different Chelsea. This is the Chelsea that I actually remember watching for the last 20 years. Chelsea with a little bit of a backbone, with a little bit of a fight, with actual attacking quality. I don't think I've said that about a Chelsea team in years, but I look at our attacking depth and I think, we'll be fine. We'll be fine. We're going to make chances. Whether we score them or not, like, second half, obviously, we weren't really at our most clinical best. But I know we're going to make enough chances to score goals. And most likely, we're going to end up winning the game anyway. So, no worries. No stresses. Obviously, we conceded the first goal in, like, the first two minutes or something like that. Really, really silly, silly goal to give away. Like, it, it, there's a, a group of errors. You've got Colwell and Caicedo. Neither of them decide to, like, take authority and clear the ball out. Sanchez just goes out to punch the ball unwarranted and just causes another giant mess. And then it's just an easy header into the net. 1-0. But like I said, I knew we were coming back because I knew the quality that we had. And we showed it. Uh, Cole Palmer especially because apparently Cole Palmer's numbers are going to slow down this season because Pochettino gave him the keys. Pochettino knows how to get the best out of his best players and now it's a team system. We're not going to be as reliant on Cole Palmer. Shut up. All this BS. Everyone loves to like just make these false ass scenarios just off nothing except just thinking. But yeah, Cole Palmer, that was my first point. The numbers aren't slowing down. The performances aren't slowing down. How's he going to deal with being triple marked in games? Teams are going to figure him out in the second season. I think he, they're still trying to figure him out. When you try to figure him out, he's just going to show you that he's got more tools in his arsenal. Because now, he's unlocking free kicks. Now he's unlocking free kicks. Like, as if he wasn't already cracked. Now... He's a danger on set pieces, he's a danger on penalties, he's a danger in open play, he's a danger from a deeper position because he can create, his passing is sensational, his take-ons are amazing for a guy that isn't rapid because he knows how to use the football. It's time to acknowledge that Cole Palmer is arguably the best player in the league. Now for me, I am a little bit biased, but I'm going to say he's the best player in the league. But there is an argument. As a bare minimum, there is an argument. Now, I know people are going to talk about longevity. Oh, he's only really been here for a season and a bit. Look, it's been two different managers. One of them was Maurizio Pochettino. Less said about that fraud, the better. Um, the, the mess that we had last season, and he still managed to get the most goals and assists in the league. And he's been able to translate those numbers into a new season under a new manager. And even with more forwards... He's still head and shoulders above everybody else. There comes a point where there's an anomaly to the case of longevity being the argument for you being the best. And I think Cole Palmer is that anomaly. For me, the best in the league. 
I'm not going to say bar none because, like, there are other players out there. Your Haaland's, your Foden's, your De Bruyne's. There's Arsenal players like... There's Mo Salah at Liverpool as well, for example. People are going to try and put him into the conversation. But Palmer is in there. He's in there. That was going to be my first point. Um, so, yeah, second point. Enzo Fernandez. People think I have an Enzo Fernandez agenda now, which is very funny, seeing as the amount of, of last season people were calling me an Enzo sexual because I was defending him every single week because Pochettino was playing him injured. Now, start of the season, I said the performances weren't good enough. Stand by that. But the last two games, I think he's turned the corner. West Ham was much more improved. His passing was a lot better. And I think the Brighton game, it went up another level because this guy was creating so many chances and he was doing that again from higher up the pitch. Like, that's why I didn't have any real problems with the positions that we were playing him in. It was more just his output. You are Enzo Fernandez. You, your best asset is your passing. If you're not passing consistently, I'm on to you. Same thing with any player that is dropping their performances, especially when it comes to their best attributes. Now... Enzo Fernandez is just balling out. He looks a lot better. If anything, I'd argue he was our best midfielder yesterday. I think Caicedo, like, for the high level of performances that he showed, he dipped a little bit. Dipped a little bit. Not Nothing too alarming or anything like that. I just think he had a go an off game. And let's just hope it's not a, a constant theme, but I don't expect it. Caicedo is Caicedo. He's a baller. But Enzo Fernandez is now starting to step up to the mark a little bit. And that... That's a good thing. Uh, Malo Gusto was the next point. He absolutely locked up Mitoma yesterday. Now, I do think he struggled a bit in the inverted role. Um, definitely seems a lot more comfortable playing in the wider areas. But when he was in those wider areas, clamped. Clamped down the right-hand side. And with him and Noni on that side, the defensive work was just next level because Noni's also upped his game on that regard as well. So I wanted to shout out Malo Gusto because... He's another one who hasn't had a great start to the season, but I do think the performances slowly but surely seem to be getting back to another level. Obviously, he's just coming back from injury too, so we need to keep an eye out for it over the next few games. Just please don't get injured again because I don't know when Reese is coming back. I don't know when Reese is coming back. Um, fourth point, Jaden Sancho. It's going to be very quick, but thank you, Manchester United, yet again. This guy is an absolute baller absolute baller his ball retention his passing his 1v1s i say the same thing every week and when i find myself saying the same thing in a positive light about a player it's just a standard in it standard sancho i hope this is the same player that we see for the remainder of the season because 25 million is looking like a steal it's looking like a mockery and it's looking like someone from manchester united needs to get the sack from that decision and i don't mean the manager the manager should have been gone time ago maybe you lot would have kept sancho and everything would have been rosy over there now you're losing three nil at home to tottenham and also by the way to all them men who said that manchester united had a better uh, were run better than chelsea hang your heads in shame Hang your heads in shame, you disgraces. How about you learn to stand up for our football club a little bit more? Um, final point. Robert Sa Yeah, Robert Sanchez. Robert Sa I nearly said Sancho. <laughs> uh, Robert Sanchez. Bad first half. I think the overall game wasn't terrible. It's just... Ugh, but the, the second goal is all you. Even the first goal, Colwell and Caicedo got to hold a little bit of smoke for that one too. But the second one, you're not even looking at the man you're passing to. That's like last season, Sanchez. Like, I'm not going to start ripping into him after one bad game. Because, like, I, I don't think it helps and everything. But don't, don't bring that silliness back. Don't bring that silliness back. Like, you have only just turned the corner. This is why people are being reserved. Please, please use your head because you actually made some decent saves in the match too. It wasn't all shocking passes. Sometimes you're even putting it out long and you were finding right players and everything. But you know what it's like being a goalkeeper. You know what it's like being a goalkeeper. Why is it saying 20%? Move, move. That's enough battery for this video. Um, oh, I've lost my train of thought. Thank you. Thank you. So yeah, as a goalkeeper... You can't be making mistakes. Nine times out of ten, you make mistakes, it leads to a goal. That's why, in spite of the fact that I don't think you did too many mistakes, 
it was nearly enough for us to drop points. Last season, we would have dropped points off those two clangers. So there's still a bit of a way for Robert Sanchez to go. But all in all, he still had good moments. Try and bring a bit more of that back. But yeah, big up to everybody that's locked in. Hit the like button, subscribe, all of that crap. Back after another victory. Give Pochettino time and all of that crap. Yes, I'm going to bring it up again. And up the Chels. Up the Chels. If you back Pochettino, have shame.